And for a dumb summer movie, you could do a lot worse than Hey, what's up guys? This is Josh here. Today I wanted to share my top 15 favorite new movies that I watched in 2021. Huge disclaimer, this isn't movies that came out in 2021 that I watched. This is movies that I had never seen before that I watched in 2021. So a few of them came out in theaters. Most of them are older, but all of them I have not seen until this year and I liked them enough to at least mention them on this list. So I did not put these in order and I did not write anything about each movie. So I'll probably forget a few aspects of each one, but here we go. Number 15 is The Beach. And now this one's a movie with Leonardo DiCaprio. I'd heard about this one for a long time. It's kind of an interesting story about a guy just really looking to escape. He ends up finding this crazy exotic island that's off the beaten path. Not everybody knows about it. Some kind of craziness ensues, you know, from that point on. But I felt like it was unique enough. I liked a lot of aspects to it. There was actually a deleted scene that I really wish they kept in this movie, which has Leonardo DiCaprio and the main girl when they go to leave somewhere. They kind of have a problem halfway that they talk about on the water and they actually cut that out from the movie. I feel like it would help, but I feel like this was a decent enough watch. Number 15, The Beach. Number 14, I'm gonna have to say Alien slash Aliens. Now, I had always heard about these movies. I had never actually watched them, but these were actually a pretty decent watch. It takes a lot for me to actually feel like I'm watching people in space. And the original Alien, it does have a little bit of this like quiet, claustrophobic space kind of a feel. It's just a really good movie to put on if you've never seen it, you know, at night. It's pretty solid. Then Aliens it came a while later, but it's a totally different style movie. It's more of like a big action blockbuster style movie. Uh, directed by James Cameron. I just feel like both of these were a great once watch. I really enjoyed them. All right, number 13 is Con Air. Now this movie to me is just completely hilarious. Like I know a lot of people who don't like Nicolas Cage or the think that he's kind of funny or dumb, but this movie is just so, it's so like funny and, and like 90s and it's not necessarily like the best movie based on like you know story and everything but it just for like a dumb fun 90s like it's hard to beat con air i just felt like this was pretty enjoyable and even if you don't like nicholas cage it's actually fun to laugh at him here all right number 12 zach snyder's justice league now i gotta be honest i really didn't like the original justice league zach snyder's justice league was a lot better um and once you got to the end it's kind of like the same ending so it wasn't as interesting but um, the scenes, especially with Wonder Woman, are actually fantastic. There's a lot of like epic battles that happened before that are completely cut from the original movie. So I really, really did enjoy Justice League. Just by the end, once it kind of turns into the same exact story, kind of, I don't know. I just kind of like the beginning a little bit more. And I wish they kind of spread out the epic scenes to more people than Wonder Woman because, I don't know, whenever there was like this, they, they use this little Aztec little yell when things get crazy around Wonder Woman and every time that happened, my adrenaline just like spiked, you know, I love that. But number 12, Zack Snyder's Justice League. All right, guys, number 11 is Casino. Now this is a movie that I avoid. I avoided watching for a long time. I really don't know why. I like Martin Scorsese. I like Goodfellas. I liked Heat. Um, to be honest, I did put Casino on and there was a very noticeably fake scene in like the very first scene of Casino where they switch a real person for a dummy and like for a couple years, I just couldn't finish watching the movie because they opened up with like, they're trying to show a real person blowing up but they blow up a dummy. Stupid reason to not watch a movie, but this movie is pretty good. I wouldn't say I like it as much as Goodfellas. I probably like Heat a little bit more but it's a really solid movie. It's got a very unique style feel and it kind of seems like things are just gonna go downhill based on that first initial scene, but things kind of are, are left in a better spot and I see why this movie is legendary. It really deserves to be up there. Very unique, not my favorite, but certainly very, very, very good. All right, guys, number 10 is Natural Born Killers. Now, this movie is very dated. When I did a review on it, people said that some people said they couldn't even get into it because it is that dated. Um, it has a very, like, 90s TV style vibe. So, obviously, like, daytime television in the 90s is going to be way different than it is today. 
But this movie is just so out there and bizarre and unique that I just can't help but love it. Uh, I like the two main characters, they're perfect. I, I like the whole evolution to the story, how they go on a rampage, they kind of get caught and then they kind of slowly go back into another rampage. I like the way it ends. I like Robert Downey Jr. in here. Very unique, very crazy. This movie would never be made the exact same ever again because it has that kind of 90s feel, but I just really like it. Number 10, Natural Born Killers. All right guys, number nine is Jungle Cruise. Now I'm somebody who I just don't like PG movies or G movies and I don't even know why I watched this I probably wouldn't have watched it if I had known it was PG but I gotta say I actually really did enjoy this movie it kind of had like a classic Disney style vibe I think I did a review on it on this channel but it just has its own character and vibe like I haven't seen in, a, in movies for a long time. It actually feels like a Disney movie, but it feels like a whole completely different idea and everything hits. I've always liked The Rock. I really like Emily Blunt. Almost everything she's in is just pretty much top notch. I have nothing bad to say about it. Really, really enjoyed this one. Probably the only PG movie on this list. All right, going from PG to super R-rated, number eight is Wild Things. Now, I don't know why I hadn't watched this movie for so long. This movie has some really, really graphic sexual scenes. Now, again, I did watch the unrated version, so it's probably gonna be a little more tuned down in the theatrical version, but the scenes are just so out there and crazy that it's hard for me to recommend this to very many people because it's way out there and way crazy for like, you know, minute and a half, two minute sex scenes here. But besides that, this story is a kick-ass story. I really like this. I like all the twists in it. Definitely do not look at the trailer online because it will ruin several twists in this movie. This movie has this constant sexual tension. It's always there, but they always kind of pull back. It's not like an American Pie frat party. You know, everybody's kind of kind of half pretending like they're not being sexual, but at the same time being like very sexual at the same time. But on top of that, it's just very unique. I love the scenery. I love the twists. I just really enjoyed Wild Things number eight. All right, guys, number seven is Gossip. Now this one, I think this movie is for free online if you wanna watch it, and I really only recommend people watch it if you're a fan of something like Scream. Um, it's kind of like this, a little bit exaggerated story of things that can happen with drama. There's just several like stories mingling into one about drama this and drama that and things building. You know, I think they even start a rumor and then at some point, like, they can't even stop the fake rumor that they started. It's got a lot of twists here. It does get a little crazy and a little far-fetched at the end, but for a Scream-style movie, I actually really enjoyed this one. And it's got James Marsden, who I think he played Superman at one point back in the day. And then also the evil queen from Game of Thrones is in this one as well. So... Pretty decent cast, a pretty good movie, and also the, one of the guys from Walking Dead, so a lot of famous people in this one. I thought it was pretty solid, but again, it's only really for people who um, like Scream and Scream-style movies. All right, guys, number six is Unfriended the Dark Web. Now, I had never seen the Unfriended movies, and I just recently watched both of them, and it's funny because I feel like what I liked about both of them and did disliked about both of them are very similar. The original Unfriended, really bad, but the idea was good. The whole setup of Unfriended is good. Right when they go and start into the kills, it's just dumb. The setup was so great and then they threw it away. Dark Web is much, much better, but again, I feel they, like they do the same thing. Um, it's essentially like a guy who works at a coffee shop and he sees somebody leave a laptop. He ends up grabbing the laptop and he goes to like video chat with his friends and he realizes that the laptop is actually like a dark web hacker and the dark web hacker is like talking to him while he's like on the phone with his friends telling him not to tell him and it's this really good interweaving story but to me it kind of falls through at the end still i think this was a decent enough watch it was way better than the first one i just felt like the conclusion and the finale was kind of generic compared to how they built it. it i just loved the way this one built all the way up until the last couple of twists i think that you know they 
Should have tried to do something a little bit different with it because I just love the beginning of this movie. Number six, Unfriended Dark Web. All right, guys, number five is Brick. Now, Brick is just one of the best movies that I've seen in a long time. It's kind of got this classic style, good story. It's very, very indie, but at the same time, everything works. This is probably one of the movies with the most indie scenes I've ever seen, but every one is different. Like every time you watch it, you're like, Hmm, that seems like some like like one of my buddies was had this idea to film this way because I've just never seen it in a movie But they only really use it like once you know what I mean They do overuse like the Sun scenes like they have these unique scenes where the Sun's directly in focus And you don't usually have that in movies nowadays But besides that I just this movie was very very serious had a lot of good twists very very unique and I enjoyed it beginning to end it's one of those movies that I just absolutely did not want to turn off at any point. I was just that engaged with it. Number five is Brick. All right, guys, number four is Old. Now, a lot of people really don't like this movie. I've actually seen this movie three times, and every time that I watch it, I'm like, or the, the last two times that I watched it, I'm like, man, I remember everything about this movie. I kind of don't want to watch it again. But every time, it's just, for some reason, this is pretty easy for me to watch on uh, rewatch. A lot of people had a lot of issues with it, but to me, I found it to be pretty straightforward, pretty good. If you think about it as kind of like M. Night Shyamalan, he's doing like this secret sci-fi thing like there's something science fiction going on but you don't know what it is and there's one big kind of twist I really enjoyed it some of the main problems people had is that the characters kind of die suddenly and I wish they had a little bit more better endings kind of look at it as it's kind of like a slasher an element like most people are gonna die I find it to be a little bit more palatable I just think most people are expecting most people to live most of the time and that's just not what happens but I really enjoyed old for what it was all right guys number three is psycho and psycho 2 now I've always heard of psycho I think everybody has heard of psycho there that, that re, 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 that's where it initiated was from psycho um, psycho and psycho 2 are very very different the first one has this kind of Hitchcock style vibe and you only really get to the Bates Motel the last half of the movie very unique It's probably the, one of the best movies that I've ever seen from 1960 I don't think any other movie would impress me from this time period as much as this one did. Just the ending and the whole the whole twist, the main big twist of this movie, I won't say it. Maybe you guys haven't looked it up, but the main twist of this movie is pretty unique and I had no idea all the way back then that we had this type of a, a killer. Psycho 2 is almost like a really good 80s slasher with the psycho feel. Um, it's unbelievable how it just feels like a good 80s slasher. A lot more kills than the original. I actually really enjoy both these movies, Psycho and Psycho 2, number three. All right, guys, number two is The Fugitive. Now, for some reason, I always thought like, oh, this is just one of those dumb old movies, like a random old movie, you know, whatever. I remember watching little bits of it as a kid and I always heard, oh, it's good, you know. But The Fugitive is just so, 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 so good. And when I watched this, I went back and I watched a lot of other Harrison Fords and none of them even touched The Fugitive. Like Air Force One, nope. Clear and Present Danger, nope. Like Patriot Games, nope. The Fugitive is where it's at. It actually has a mystery. Tommy Lee Jones is great in this movie. I had actually no idea how in depth the mystery goes. I had seen like one scene on TV when I was growing up, but I never followed it through to the end. Really enjoyed this movie. By far my favorite 90s Harrison Ford movie, like post Indiana Jones, those style movies. Loved The Fugitive, number two. All right, guys, number one. Everybody has their own taste. Feel free to destroy me down below. But I just wanted some nostalgia, right? So I'm like, you know what? Let me throw on a movie I've never seen before. People say that Speed 2 Cruise Control is like the worst movie ever made. It's notorious for having a huge budget and it just, everybody hated it. So I'm like, you know, I'm just gonna put it on. And for a dumb summer movie, you could do a lot worse than Speed 2 Cruise Control. Now I understand why people hated it because it's not that bad of a movie. Keanu Reeves is, I mean, he's almost like an Arnold Schwarzenegger. So, you know, putting someone to replace him, of course it's not gonna work. It would almost probably have been better if they used Sandra Bullock as like not the same character or like made it its own story. So it's not like Keanu Reeves' girl getting with this guy kind of a thing. This movie was very, very easy for me to watch as like a dumb summer style movie. I feel like I've seen way, way more dumb 
stupid hard to watch summer movies than this one. I mean, there was probably a few hard to watch scenes in here. When William Defoe throws the guy out of the boat, it was kind of a little weird. For a big summer blockbuster, like I could watch this like every couple summers easy. Just like, oh, you want to throw on a dumb summer movie? Yeah, throw it on. Of course, it's not as good as Speed and he's not as good as Keanu Reeves, but even this actor, he's not a bad actor. Like, I'm sorry, he's not, a, he, maybe he's not the best actor, but he's not bad. So number one, and again, it's not like number one in order it just happens to be the last one that i wrote down was speed to cruise control so anyways guys let me know what your favorite movies that you've seen this year are let me know what you think of my list let me know some new movies that i should check out down below i'm always looking to check out something new right now i'm actually into some shows i'm actually finishing up the new dexter i'm watching some peaky blinders and i'm finishing up lord of the rings i've never seen lord of the rings either so i used to think it was so nerdy and it's actually not that bad of a story so anyways guys we're on the road to 50 thousand subscribers and i couldn't do it without any of you guys hope you guys are the best i'm having a great day out here hopefully having a great day at home see you all in the next video peace